Um, so this video here, uh, am I going? Am I not going? Okay, sorry about that. I guess I'm going. All right. So in this video here, um, we'll talk about how to actually solve uh, this system KD equals F um, with displacement boundary conditions, both homogeneous and inhomogeneous boundary conditions. Um, okay, um, so where are we? Excuse me for being confused here. All right, so let's let's solve the following problem here, okay? So actually, we, we this is the same problem we did in the direct um, assembly method. This was the third problem. I just plugged in some numbers for the different uh, element stiffnesses so we can do this with numbers. Um, I'll probably solve it with MATLAB, so let me get MATLAB going, and we can solve it in MATLAB. Uh, but let's show you the approach here. We're going to consider two cases. The first case, we're going to consider both nodes 1 and 2 fixed. So D1 and D2 are going to be set to 0, okay? D1 equals D2, and they're both 0. This is what we call homogeneous. Hi. Hi. Are you recording? I'm recording. Do you want to, do you want to make a guest appearance? <laughs> That's you. Okay. <laughs> Professor it's Ben's here. This could be the quest. This will be the question for this video. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes a guest appearance in the video? <laughs> okay. okay. Do you want to? Do you want to need a? Ten minutes? Okay. <laughs> okay, because I'm going. Yes. I'll use this because okay. I have something to check. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. So there you go. So, question for this video will be, who came in at about the two minute mark? Okay. <laughs> All right. It'll be Doctor Abed. She came in. Okay. Um, All right. So this is uh, what we call. Excuse me. You just lost all this stuff because. This type of boundary condition is called homogeneous, meaning that the right-hand side is zero. D1 and D2 are equal to zero. This one here is going to be D1 equal to zero. That's a homogeneous boundary condition. And then D2 equals 0.2 inches. And that's an inhomogeneous boundary condition. Excuse me for overlapping there, OK? All right, so as we've talked about in class before, obviously you cannot solve this system of equations directly as it stands here without considering the displacement boundary conditions. This matrix is singular. If you try to take the inverse, it's going to be zero. I mean, it's determined as zero, so its inverse is not going to exist, which means you cannot uniquely solve for the displacements. And the reason why is although you can uniquely solve for the stretching and the forces, uh, the displacement is uh, good to what we call a rigid body mode in the sense that you could take a spring and stretch it, right? But if I move the spring up here and stretch it, even though it has the same stretch and I've used the same forces, the displacements are different, right? If I hold this end fix and displace to the right, hold the right fixed and displace to the left. So, so you have to constrain the rigid body motion, okay? So fix one of the nodes, all right? OK. All right. So how do we solve this system with the displacement boundary conditions? OK. Well, in the spring video, I kind of go for, over it very quickly. But let's talk about case one, the homogeneous case. This is the easiest one, all right? D1 equals 0 and D2 equals 0. All right, so we already know that the columns of the stiffness matrix uh, are the factors that get multiplied by these nodal unknowns. So the first column gets multiplied by D1, the second column by D2, the third column by D3, and the fourth column by D4. Okay? So we could actually write these equations, and I'll do this, well, let me do it out for once. I'll do it for the first one, that's pretty easy. 
50, 0, minus 50, 0. This is the first column multiplied by D1 plus the second column, 0, 100, minus 100, 0, times D2 plus the third column, which is minus 50, minus 100, 2, 10, and minus 60 gets multiplied by d3 and then finally the fourth column 0 0 minus 60 60 all gets multiplied by d4 and that equals the right hand side f1 f2 0 and 200 pounds and i'm dropping the units here i was good about keeping the units up here but i'm dropping them here just to make my life easier uh, let me mention something on the right-hand side as well. Notice we have F1 and F2. These are the unknown reaction forces. Okay. Uh, zero is the external force at node three. Uh, there's nothing applied there, and the 200 pounds is applied at node four. Okay. So that's where the right-hand side vector comes in. We do not know F1, F2. All right. We'll find out how to do that. Maybe I'll break this into two parts. Okay. Uh, but here you can see this is exactly the same as this system of equations, just broken up into a sum of column vectors, all right? Now, um, if D1 is equal to zero, this all goes to zero, actually, as a column vector, and really does nothing. Likewise, since D2 is zero, this entire column vector goes to zero. And all we're really left with are uh, variables involving D3 and D4. Um, two unknowns, four equations. Well, uh, the thing is we have these two other unknowns here. Uh, they're a little difficult to deal with because they're on the right-hand side. That gives you the four unknowns, F1, F2, D3, and D4 for four equations. But we can actually solve for D2, I'm sorry, D3 and D4. If we just look at this reduced system here, this lower 2 by 2, okay? In which case, what do we have? If I just take this and this portion and this portion, right? I have, and I'll just write it into matrix form now just because now you can see it. 210 minus 60 minus 60 and 60 times d3 d4 equals 0 and 200 okay now that system is not singular you can solve for d3 and d4 uh, you can see right here if you take the determinant it's clearly not 0 right 210 times 60 is not equal to negative 60 times 60 right so the term is not 0 okay so we can solve for this system. Uh, let me just solve it real quick over here in MATLAB. Um, so let's put the, I'll, I'll say KR, because that's the reduced stiffness matrix. That's going to be 210 uh, minus 60. The second row is going to be minus 60, 60. OK, that's my reduced stiffness matrix. My reduced force vector on the right-hand side right, is going to be the zero and then the 200 pounds, okay? And now we can solve for the displacement vector, which is gonna be nodes, the displacement at three and four using uh, the approach we talked about previous, okay? So we're solving, well, I actually you wanna put an, an R here. This means the reduced displacement values equals KR times F, I'm sorry, divided by FR, right? Or that's the MATLAB notation to basically solve the system of equations. Um, okay, now there's the answer we get, right? So we solve this system and it gives us the answer. Let me I can move this over here. All right, so solving in MATLAB, this tells us that D3 equals 1.33 inches it moves to the right and d4 equals 4.66 repeating inches to the right all right 
Now we also know from before that D1 equals D2 equals zero, right? So that's the total displacement solution, okay? All right, now how would we go back and get the reaction forces, okay? Well, the reaction forces here, F1 and F2, how do we get those? Well, they're right here, okay? So now if you look at this system of equation, or, or if you look at these two equations, if you will, right? We know all the nodal displacements. So we can take the original global stiffness matrix, right? Multiply it by our solution, and that'll give me the, the right-hand side forces. So that's what we're going to do, okay? So let me go back and do that. Let's see if I can do this. Can I keep both things on the page at once? I think I can. All right. So we're going to solve this system, right? So let me just rewrite the total stiffness matrix, the non-reduced one. I probably should have done this to begin with. It would have been easier, but it doesn't take the system's not too bad. 0, 100, minus 100, 0, or minus 50, minus 100, 210, minus 60, and 0, 0, minus 60, 60, right? Okay, so there's my global stiffness matrix K, all right? And fine, the displacement vector, our solution, right, is, well, D1 is 0, D2 is 0, D3 we have found out to be 1 point, uh, well, actually, I can just put DR here. I'm going to cheat a little bit, all right? So it puts that. So this is our solution, right? Now, to get the force, the external forces, that is going to be K times D. Now, when I do that, you see, of course, for the third and fourth nodes, it recovers the right-hand side we had before, because those systems of equations were already satisfied. For the first two nodes, it doesn't give zero, and that makes sense, because, in fact, this returns the reaction forces, or the forces that balance the sum of forces at the first node and the second node. So that means the reaction force at the first node is 66.7 pounds to the left, and on the second node it's 133, okay? So that's actually the answer. So if we go up here, all right, the reaction forces are gonna be, um, F1, F1's down here, right? So we have 66.6, repeating going this way, and this is no two, so we have the 133.3 going to the left, okay? All right? So I'm gonna stop here. I think that's a good place to stop. Actually, I'll split this up into two videos, all right? And we'll pick this up, and we'll, next video, we'll talk about the second case when, well, let's go away here. The second case when D2 is not equal to zero, okay? Where we hold node one fixed, but D2 is going to move a little bit into the right, okay? And it's actually pretty simple. We, we do the same thing, except this vector doesn't go to zero. It goes to a known quantity, this vector multiplied by 0.2, and we can swing that over to the right-hand side and alter the right-hand side and then get the, the system of equations, okay? All right, let me stop there.